Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I will be continuing on the IGL series that I have made in the past. Um, today, we're going to specifically kind of look at um, mainly being an IGL and basically how to strat. Uh, now, this video is going to consist of a few different things, but Basically, if you already know how to IGL or if you've been doing it for a while and you already have a strat book and stuff like that, um, this video doesn't really pertain to you. It's mostly to your teammates. Um, it's going to explain kind of how everything works and then maybe some suggestions if you don't do them already, some things for new IGLs to consider. So, with that being said, um, there are two things that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at CT-sided strats, and we're going to look at T-sided strats. Now, with the team that I have joined, uh, Wittick, I am their IGL currently. We are working on a roster and things like that. But we have basically... I have had to remake my strat book due to me being on a couple different teams, and I'm not very good when it comes to sharing knowledge. So... I am basically remaking the strat book so that way that we will have something and then I can just use it for multiple teams. So, um, CT sided setups. Let's start with that. So, a good CT sided A setup would be two or three on A. Now, a normal Mirage spread out in say MM or maybe ESEA is a two one two. So you're gonna have two A, one mid, two B. Um, we're going to focus mainly on a site right now um, because if I lay this out, maybe you guys will sort of understand how it works. So basically in a 2-1-2, you have one player mid, which means you're not going to have much support for connector. So what your teammate is either going to have to do is he's going to have to sit stairs and sit connector. So basically, okay, it's all dependent upon your teammates. If you have a B player that likes to play cat, then... Uh, your cat player can come right up here and watch your underpass. Or maybe he could sit right here and watch your underpass. If your mid player likes sitting window, then he can t watch your top mid, and then that's mid covered. However, if you have a mid player that does not play... Uh, if you have a mid player that does not play window, and he prefers to play connector, that means he will be the one watching underpass, and the cat guy will be watching top mid. Okay, so now that we have that sort of figured out, um, the two A players, most common spots usually are stairs and CT, or CT and front sight. So maybe you have a teammate sitting, you know, firebox or under balk or on top of balk watching palace. So, a common strat is a 2 1 2 that's kind of just like a default and sort of just tells you where everyone's supposed to go. Now ways that you sort of hold your sight is mostly dependent on counter stratting. So what I mean by that is if the T side enjoys pushing A a lot, there are a lot of things that you can do to delay that. Now, if they like rushing ramp a lot, what you can do is at the beginning of the round, maybe delay five seconds and then throw molly or ramp. This will basically halt their push and then, yes, they can peek behind it, but it's very risky. Um, you can have your teammate that's playing A with you throw a nade or also have a molly. And then after your molly is gone, he can throw his. However, after the first molly is gone, say you throw a smoke here. And then they try to flash through. Then what your teammate does, if he has a molly, is he can molly Tetris but except, you know, not messing it up twice. So, <laughs> God, it does not want to land. Okay. So if he mollies Tetris, this will molly anything past the smoke. So they will basically have to be sitting right here out in the open. And what most T players like to do is they like to smoke CT. And then if there's an opera CT, he usually jumps ticket booth to try to peek around it. So, that's pretty much a ramp hold. Um, obviously, you guys will have flashes if you have full utility and things like that. If they enjoy, you know, pushing to up palace, 
Um, you could kind of do the same sort of setup for Palace. Just molly it. Um, once your molly's gone, go ahead and smoke. And that's pretty much a hold for CT side. Most of it is very simplistic, and again, like I said, it's mainly based upon counter -stratting. Um, You know, if they like to push a ramp a lot, you could always go aggressive and play maybe 3A at the beginning of the round, get ramp control, and then one of your ramp players could fall back to B or wherever you drawed him from. So, CT side setups are very, very important, and without a strong CT side, you're almost never going to win the game. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and swap to T side. Now T side is a bit more difficult and it's honestly probably the side that I enjoy most stratting on. But if you are a newer team, you guys most likely want to start out with just defaults. There are a few different defaults that you can do. But just to get this kind of out of the way, you guys need to have determined roles. now. What I mean by that is uh, support, entry, rifler, opper, and IGL. So, there are many different defaults that you can do. You can do a full map spread default, which is like um, a 2-2-1, two, two, one, one upper B, two mid, and then one palace, one ring. Um, that works and all, but you have to be very reliant on your team hitting those shots and be able to cover what they need to be very smart with their nade usage uh there are together defaults where you play maybe um three a one mid one b to watch the b push so you know maybe you have your b guy distract towards or throw a fake towards b and then all your a guys maybe prep at like 130 125 and then they throw their nade set you know, CT, stairs, jungle, or, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But um, T-side strats are very important because it gives your team a detailed outline and sort of instruction to do what they need to do. Now, with having strats, you cannot write them and then just expect them to work. It does take practice and things like that. You are going to have to be ready for that. Okay. So... Now that we have that kind of out of the way, um, this is pretty much most common. Um, I will show you sort of a common nade set for A, just to sort of show you how it works. So, you know, CT smoke, stair smoke, and then here's jungle. I think I might have messed that up, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so CT, stairs, and then jungle. So, there's three major points smoked out. Now, when a guy comes up here, you can molly under balk. Or you can even do it while you're running out. Just bounce it off the sign. But you guys have to make sure that when you're entering site, you do not use more nades than necessary. So, you know, three smokes and a molly. That's a lot of nades. Who then... They'll have two teammates that have smokes if they bought full utility and you have four teammates with still mollies and that's best case scenario of course so just to sort of explain what this molly does because I don't see it a whole lot um, mollying under balk basically makes it so that you guys do not have to clear it while you're clearing site so you can focus on the CT smoke the jungle smoke and the stair smoke so you can plant like here for CT or you can even plant default for firebox or under balk or you could plant for a ramp which would be right about here but that would be kind of risky considering that you have two smokes in front of you and you don't know if anyone's on the other side okay so to move on let's talk about strat books so strat books are very important um especially from me i haven't really been igling a whole lot and i don't really know the ins and outs of everything just quite yet but i am getting there um, bad books are very important now any way that you do this is be going to be beneficial to your team you cannot just explain a strat and then keep it locked up in your brain and then not have it written down somewhere and expect your teammates to understand you fully on what you want them to do 
So ways that you can have scrapbooks is you can have a written copy of a scrapbook or you can have something like Google Docs that's online and you can link to people. Um, I do use Google Docs for most of my strats. Um, it is kind of the main platform. So that way, you know, you can take out your phone and stuff like that uh, and check it anytime, you know, there's a new strat added or maybe you're rusty a little bit and you need to check on something. Now, something that I have started to do personally because or so that I do not have to rely on my phone so much is a couple days ago I bought a memo book and ba basically what I was, uh, what I've been doing is writing down the strats each and every strat that I have made so far in here with a pencil so if I need to change anything it'll be easy because it's written pencil I don't have to go out and buy a new memo book or waste paper so um don't know if you guys will be able to see this but basically this is one of our strats in detail um i'm sure you guys probably can't see that so what i'm going to do is i'll read it to you now the first thing that is written is the name oh boy the name and then you have the number of players that's going to go where and then you have the detailed description under that so Strat's called Roadblock. It's a three on one, means three A, one mid, one B. So the explanation of everything is three pillars go A, they sit CT, balcony, and connector, just common spots, they don't have to sit there. Then CT player buys kit, others buy Kevlar, mid player sits cat, also buys Kevlar. And then B player sits van, if made contact, falls to sight and waits for rotations, this player buys Kevlar. So basically, just a quick little description uh, this will help the IGL, especially in case of, you know, say you take a break for like a week and your players forget parts of the strats. Um, you have it right in front of you and then you can kind of just list it. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot to write these down. You can do it on normal notebook paper. Um, but I thought it would be easier just to kind of have a little memo book. So that way I could just flip through it and kind of see what I want to do, especially mid round and stuff like that. So yeah, um, strat books are very important, like I said before, so make sure you start working on one if you don't have one already. Um, and it'll basically just help you out in the long run. You, if you're an IGL and you team hop a lot, it'll you can use them for multiple different teams. Um, depending on what level you're at, you know, if you're in the pro level, I probably wouldn't recommend it because people can counter strat you easily. But, you know, stuff like open and stuff like that um there's a lot of different teams so i doubt pe many people are going to be able to counter strat you and if they are it's probably because they've looked at your demos anyways so yeah very important um an example of a t-sided strat because that is just my t-sided book i have two books this is the t-sided book um it's the same sort of layout uh i will just kind of show you guys you got your name, the number of players that's going to go where, and then you have the description. So the strat is called Mystic. It's basically an anti-eco default for after pistol round. The 2 2 one, so you're going to have two T's go A, two T's go mid, and then two T's go B, or one T go B. So the description again is anti-eco default. Then you have two players go mid, use all utility. So basically what the mid players are doing in this strat is they're getting mid control, they're smoking off window, they're mollying connector, they're smoking off cat, um, anything to get mid control. And then the other point on here is 2A players and B players save utility and relay info to IGL. So basically what this means is that whenever a, or while the mid players are getting while the mid players are getting mid control, what the two A guys and the B guy are going to do is relay sounds, anything they hear to their IGL. So that way you can, uh, your IGL can mid round call and then you guys can either determine to split A or you can take bomb back, back through T spawn and then hit B. Uh, most likely though, most teams end up stacking on anti-eco, whether it be like a 3-1-1 or they try to get mid uh, control early, so 131 or something like that. Um, 
shots like these are very important for you to be able to get info and be able to talk correctly. Um, and yeah, so basically something that I haven't gone over yet is exactly how to make strats or how to get ideas for strats. Now, this is a very simplistic process when you first start out IGLing, however, it will be very difficult to try to come up with ideas. So what I suggest is, you know, copying pro strats or maybe a team that you watch like Mythic, they, you know, have all their strats on stream. So all you have to do is watch, you know, all their streams maybe together or one at a time, and you can kind of get the layout of their strats. And then you just write them down and you know that'll work perfectly but something that are ways to sort of get strats if you kind of had a hard or hard time just coming up with them on your own is watching youtube videos there's plenty of demos um and plenty of just youtubers making content on strats basically simplistic strats like i watched one this morning on um mid to A and mid to B for Mirage. It was very detailed and that guy did a very good job. Another way to get ideas for strats are pro matches. Um, a lot of professional players that aren't on teams, um, like nothing, Days, uh, Steel sometimes does it I believe, Adran, you know, people like that, they make videos on professional teams and how their strats work. So they give you a detailed description and sort of commentary on what they're doing at what at any given time. So this will help you a lot with being able to write it down and kind of branch off your own little strat off of each of one of them, which is what I kind of do. I kind of take like the basis from people and their videos and their ideas. And then I kind of come up with my own strats off of that. So, um, this video is kind of longer and it's kind of a more explanation video and I'm kind of just sitting here, but I kind of just wanted to get this out of uh, there or kind of get this out there because it is very important for new IGLs to kind of understand what they're doing because if they hop into a role, they don't know what they're doing, then their teammates are going to rely on them and then it's going to go nowhere. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I have not been recording lately. I was sick a couple weeks ago and then I have finals next week. So I'm kind of busy and kind of stressed out from being sick and stuff for so long. Um, also another thing I have realized is I need to make myself a new intro. So I'll be working on that very shortly. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos to come and I will talk to you guys in the next video. I thank you for watching. Up. Uh, yeah. Can you get that uh app for me please? Me? Yeah. Wait, what? what'd you say? Because you need it if you're... Yeah, I get it. I'm in a game right now. I was just... Gonna try. Also, do you know what's up with... Dak and his ban? Yeah, Dak got a ban, dude. Yeah, I just... Probably cheating. That's what I said. I'm like, Dak's fucking cheating.